Chris, welcome to uh, Harvest's little hints and tips video for use on a mobile voice. In this case, we're using the Olympic 180. Doesn't have to be. Um, it works with our Pro 185 and another hoist as well. But um, hoisting can cause quite a lot of injuries, and a lot of them are to do with moving the hoist, especially with a heavy resident, um, a heavy patient, heavy service user, depending on where you're working. Um, and then it depends also on the flooring and carpets and thickness of carpets. So a couple of little hints and tips for you. The biggest cause of injury to care staff with a hoist is turning. If I turn to the left or turn to the right, there's a lot of twisting motion going on in my spine physically to move that hoist. Well, obviously I'm exaggerating that, but if I was on a thicker carpet with a heavier person, that would be realistic, trying to get that hoist to turn around and face the direction I want to go. Quick tip for you. If I want to turn to the left, I'm going to put the left hand brake on. And instead of pushing the hoist with two hands here, I'm going to put both hands on the right hand side, push the hoist and it will turn all the way around for me and there's no twisting on my spine. If I swing it all the way back, take the brake off. If I want to turn to the right, bring the hoist towards you guys, if I turn to the right, right hand brake, push the left hand side and we can do it the hoist round and round and round and round in circles. Whenever we get to face the direction we want to be, if it's towards the chair in the corner, I then take the brake off, wrong one, and go towards the chair. So that's going to save a lot of stress and strain on care staff and family members who are trying to operate hoist and turn direction. The other big tip for you um, is when you're changing direction with the hoist. If I push the hoist forward, you'll, you'll see the casters at the back here are facing backwards. If I stop and pull the hoist backwards, they kind of screw into the carpet and get stuck. They kind of get stuck sideways and pause, and you end up trying to pull the hoist back to turn those casters around. You'll also notice that the carry bar is starting to swing as well. It's most prevalent when you're hoisting from a bed. So if I push the hoist under a bed, I lift a heavy person, I've got to get that hoist to, to move backwards, and the casters will pause the hoist for a second when they spin into the carpet, causing the swinging, and causing quite often you'll see cameras do this to get the hoist moving. So, put the hoist under the bed, you can by all means attach the sling to the hoist, get everything ready, but before you press the up function, take the back of the hoist, make a quick circle, and we change the direction of the caster, so they're now facing forward. So when I want to lift then the resident, the person in bed, and move them back, I can literally use my fingers, because the hoist is already prepared to move in this direction. And I'm not going through that phase of the stop start causing the swinging of the person, banging of legs against the hoist, etc. etc. It also works when you're just generally moving around a room. So if I'm moving forwards and want to stop and go backwards, don't. We actually go sideways and backwards. And then we go sideways and forwards, sideways and backwards, sideways and forwards. And I can do this all day long. The carry bar doesn't swing. The person doesn't swing, they don't bang themselves around because we're avoiding that twisting the casters into the carpet which causes the swing, causes the pause and causes the effort from staff. So that's tip number two for you. Under the bed, when moving the hoist, turn the casters to face the way you want to do um, and then obviously the brake to turn left or right. I hope that helps guys, you don't have to use it every time. But if you've got a heavier person or a thicker carpet and you're really struggling, try one of those techniques, it might help you out. Thanks for watching.